I would like to take a bit of time to talk to you about post processors. This video is a very basic introduction to post processors. In this video, I'm going to explain what a post processor is, why you need one, and how to get the best possible post processor. I will also briefly cover the machine and control definitions. In-house solutions has a dedicated team of engineers who develop, deliver, and modify post processors. Their goal is to provide you with a post that can provide edit-free, air-free, and C code to run your machine successfully every time. What is a post processor? A post processor is sometimes referred to as a black box. Some people are intimidated by a post processor, but really it's a text file that anyone can open, look at, and even modify if you choose. If you're going to modify your post, it is a good idea to create a backup of the current version prior to making any changes. A post processor is essentially a translator. It takes the toolpath data from Mastercam and translates it to code or language your CNC machine can understand. A Mastercam post processor will contain the machine kinematics, so ensuring the developer knows the machine configuration is ideal. Providing pictures of the machine to the post developer is a good idea when you have an older machine or a machine that may have two or more possible configurations. So why do you need a post processor? A post allows you to create toolpaths and generate code from those toolpaths. You can edit the toolpath quickly and repost the file to get a different result. Posts can be customized to allow for the use of various machine features that may exist on the machine. Without a post, many of these features would be difficult to program and would not be utilized. By having these features set up within a post, you can be sure you are getting the full potential and best value out of your machine. Another reason for purchasing a post is the flexibility to change between machines. You can program a part for a particular machine and then decide the part would be better cut on another machine. By changing the post, you can move the part from machine A to machine B quickly without having to make any major changes within Mastercam. Now, why might you need more than one post processor? Machines come in different configurations. Table table, head head, head table to list a few. Within that, an AC table table is different from a BC table table. Each different configuration uses different kinematics, which means they all require a different post to provide the machine with the necessary code. Another reason you may require more than one post is that machine manufacturers team up with control companies and offer different control options on different machines. This means two machines with identical kinematics can speak a completely different language. So if you have multiple control languages at your facility, you will certainly need multiple posts. Here is an example of a posted toolpath, which was the same toolpath, posted out for three different controls. This toolpath was a 3 plus 2 operation, which was cutting a chamfer on the right side of the part. The far left code is for a Fanuc machine. The middle example is code for a Siemens control. And the code on the far right is for a Heidehein control. As you can see, there's quite a bit of difference between the code. If you had machines with each of these controllers, you would require a different post processor for each one to generate the code required to operate the machine. How can I be sure I'm getting the best possible post processor for my machine? Providing sample code showing features used by the machine is an excellent start. Much like cars, some machines have options that can be purchased. Without telling the developer what options were purchased on the machine, how would they know how the code should appear? It is also important to provide machine limits for the rotary and tilt axis, as well as positive directions of these axes. If the machine is older or the machine isn't common, providing programming manuals or at least a list of GNM codes goes a long way. Additionally, if the machine has accessories added onto it such as aggregates or additional rotary axes, providing photos of these accessories also assists the developer in understanding the machine and its functionality. If our developers are unsure about any of the information provided, don't be surprised if we call you seeking out additional information. Providing us with a contact at your company who knows how to operate the machine and understands the code can be a very valuable asset when working on more complicated projects. A machine definition provides Mastercam with a map outlining the axes your machine has. 
So if we go over into master cam here, we can find the machine definition under the machine tab and under our job setup here. You can change axis labels and tilt rotary directions. So to change a axis label or tilt rotary direction, we are going to double click on this tilt VMC A axis. And if I want to change the label to let's say a B axis, I would do that here under machine coordinates. And if I wanted to change the direction of this tilting axis from counterclockwise to clockwise, I would just select clockwise there. This is the axis that the tilt axis is actually tilting about. So right now it's tilting about the X axis. If I wanted to have it tilt about the Y axis, I would just click on the Y plus direction here. So by changing this, I've essentially changed this machine now from an AC machine to a BC machine with the tilt axis tilting about the Y instead of the X. Now you can see my OK button is off the screen. So to get down to that, I click in this box, I hit tab on my keyboard and then hit space. And that will accept the change that you made in there. And that's how we go about changing the tilt rotary directions and axis labels in the machine definition. Here's a slide that just illustrates where you can change the rotary or tilt axis machine labels and directions. What is a control definition? A control definition is a file that Mastercam uses to store settings for controlling your NC code output. The control definition contains common settings for things like arc formatting and settings for sequential numbers, among other things. The idea behind the control definition is it gives the programmer the ability to adjust settings using a graphic user interface instead of having to make edits directly in your post processor. So to get into the control definition, we can click on this little icon here to edit the control definition. I'm going to go over the most common items changed in the control definition now. There are more options, however, the ones I don't touch on typically aren't changed or looked at. If you're going to modify your control definition, please ensure you create a copy of the file you currently have or back up the file. Changing some of the options here will greatly affect the code generated by the post. In the control definition, under files, you can set data paths indicating where the NC file is posted to, and you can change the NC file extension right here. Under NC output options, you can turn on or off specific comments, you can turn off sequence numbers, or change the sequence numbers start and increment. Under Tool, you can influence the tool offset values or enable tool staging if required by your machine. Under Arc, you can influence the arc output by the post processor. This would allow you to change the arc center type to one of these six options. Making sure the arc center type is correct is necessary to run your CNC machine. On this slide, you can see three different arc types being output. This is all programmed from the same part file, but as you can see, the code is different based on the arc type selected. The first one on the left side is a radius arc type. The middle one is delta start to center, and the one on the right is absolute. Back in the control definition now, you can change the arc breaks to one of these three options. This can be changed if your CNC machine is having issues cutting arcs. You can also output helix moves or have these moves linearized. And you can modify the arc air checking routines in the post. Selecting arc air check options here sets the value of a variable to switch on the selected arc air checking routines in the post. This will filter invalid arcs from the toolpath data and change the posted output based on what options you have selected. The feed page allows you to change the feed type the post outputs. This is usually only important if you have a rotary table or a 5-axis machine. Here you can output degrees per minute or inverse feed rates if you have a rotary table. This means if you have one of those options enabled, 
your program feed rate will typically not be output in the posted code. On this slide, we can see the code output on the left is degrees per minute, and on the right is inverse. The feed rate values are quite different based on what options you have selected. So back in the control definition now, under the machine cycles, there are two pages here, mill and mill drill cycles. The mill drill cycles page determines if the post is going to output a can drill cycle or a long hand drilled cycle. With these options checked, as shown here, the post will output a can drill cycle. And with these options turned off, it will output a long hand drill cycle. These five pages are the most commonly accessed and modified pages in the control definition. This will conclude the introductory video on post processors. Hopefully this will provide you with a bit more knowledge on post processors. If you have any further questions, please feel free to email us at info at inhousesolutions.com. Please subscribe to our newsletter at www.inhousesolutions.com forward slash subscribe.